Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna, 
Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama. Very well, thank you very much. So, uh, uh, Nirmai Prabhu, hold on, let me see. Nirmai Prabhu is here. Nirmai Prabhu, go ahead if you'd uh, like to start the program and welcome all the devotees. Hare Krishna, everybody, welcome to our daily Sangha program, to our co Sangha program today. We have uh, Great pleasure of having our resident sannyasi, Jayadvait Maharaj, uh, who will continue his classes on the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Thank you all for coming. Hare Krishna. And we're, we're at 118.49. Thank you, Nilamani Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Om Namo Bhagavate. Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate, Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate, Vasudevaya. Let me just get set up here. Good. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Sri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Shaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashta Chadeshatare Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Where we left off, Prikshit Maharaj has been cursed by Shringi, a, the son of a sage, but the king, although he could possibly have counteracted the curse or avenged the curse. I took no such steps because it's the nature of a devotee to be forbearing, to uh, be tolerant, uh, to accept his, uh, his lot. So uh, he simply accepted the, the curse. Uh, Itiputra Kritaghena so nutapto mahamuni hi swayam viprakrito ragya naivagham tad achintayat. The sage regretted the sin committed by his son and he didn't take the insult paid by the king uh, very seriously. The uh, prophet points out that the actual uh, sin was the one not committed by the king, but committed by the uh, Brahmin boy. But because he was only a foolish child, he deserved to be pardoned by the Lord. And the king also didn't mind the curse, but he took, as Prabhupada said, full advantage of the awkward situation. And by the great will of the Lord, he achieved the highest perfection of life through the grace of Srila 
Shukadev Goswami. So everything was a setup by by Krishna. The uh, boy had cursed the king. The king had insulted the Brahmin. This was all Krishna's arrangement uh, for the to bless his uh, devotees and give us the opportunity to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Prayasha sadhavo loke prayar dvandveshu yojitaha mahavyatanti nurishanti yata atma gunashrayaha. Generally, the transcendentalists, even though engaged by others in the dualities of the material world, are not distressed, nor uh, pleased by such things, for they are transcendentally engaged. Any questions here so far? We've uh, come to the end of the chapter, thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports of this chapter, Maharaj Prikshit cursed by a Brahmin boy. Uh, material distresses and happinesses are products of the three modes and therefore the causes of such material happiness and distress have nothing to do with the transcendentalists. Maharaj? Yes, sir. Hare Krishna. I had a question about this verse. It says, generally the transcendentalists, even though engaged by others in the dualities of the material world, does Prabhupada expand on that in the purport? I'm not quite sure what it means to be engaged by others in the dualities. The no, Prabhupada doesn't expand on it, although he does say that uh, both the king and the rishi were uh, unattached to the accidental incident created by the supreme will. That's a different point. They, they both saw that this is Krishna's uh, arrangement and therefore uh, they weren't distressed by it nor pleased by it. Uh, they were uh, transcendental to the whole thing. Uh, let's see. Parayar dvandveshu uh, yojita, being engaged yojita, dvandveshu in duality, uh, Parai, uh, by by others. Uh, so Prabhupada doesn't expand on it. I don't remember that uh, Vishnath did either. But the we can understand that the, the basic idea here is uh, that somebody else causes you uh, trouble or someone else uh, benefits you materially. Um, they, they bring you up or they pull you down. But if you're a transcendentalist, it's like, so what? This is not, uh, they, they're engaged in these things externally. Right. The, the devotee is not actually engaged in the dualities of this world, but others you know, try to pull them in or act in such a way as to pull them in. So even if they superficially get pulled in, uh, Brikshit Maharaj became the, the victim of a curse, or he might have become the beneficiary of some some uh, good fortune. But mm -hmm. it, it, this is not, I'm not this body. I'm not, I don't belong to this world. Um, so they're transcendental to these things. Right. The, the other question that came to mind, and I don't think this is something that's come up yet in this, in, in your in your talks, is that this phenomenon of being cursed to have something happen to you is outside of the experience of contemporary man. But evidently it used to be such that if you had certain power, you could just say something and it would happen. Yeah. Uh, it's really remarkable. Yeah, now it's like, um the um, that that power is no longer there. But yes, previously, uh, if someone cursed you, that would be uh, that meant something could really happen. Now it's just a, a verbal formula, you know, go to hell. Uh, in uh, there's well in the Jewish community, there's a curse like. Um, May you break your leg, God forbid. 
So you, you curse and qualify it at the same time. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, cultural note there. <laughs> Jai. Uh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, you started to do that. Um, Hare. This is actually a point from last the last session you did on Friday, yes. uh, where we were talking about criticism, for example, mm -hmm. and how everyone, you know, this is the age of Kali and everyone criticizes everyone. And I actually thought of um, Vaisheshika Prabhu. He, when he initiates his disciples, I've been in two of his initiations, and when he initiates his disciples, he actually makes them take an additional vow in addition to the standard ISKCON vows. And that is to refrain from criticizing anyone and especially do not do any criticism on the internet. Mm. I thought, that's, that's wonderful. And his, you know, his disciples have such a wonderful mood, like their guru. But I thought that was very interesting. Um, they're taking a vow in front of the deities in the fire to actually refrain from criticizing. Yeah, it's like beneficial for the disciples and the guru also. Yeah. Not to have to accept the responsibility for disciples who um, you know, would insult others on, on the internet. So it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's good for him and it's good for them that this, it's really a great vow not to, uh, and the other side of it is um, both things happen on the internet. We curse on the internet. We, we, uh, you know, we, we pull our shoulder, our uh, pistol out of our shoulder and, uh, out of, mm -hmm. out of our holster and, and, and uh, let the bullets fly. And the other thing is we, we, um, we become the recipients of that kind of stuff on the internet. Yeah. So um, Maharaj Prichit wouldn't get pulled in. Um, he wasn't affected at, by the curse, um, nor did he counter curse. Um, he, you know, the, the people like Maharaj Prichit where devotees following in the footsteps of Maharaj Pariksit would be quite bad for Facebook. <laughs> they would hurt uh, the bottom line. That's right. <laughs> but Facebook can be used for glorifying devotees. That's that's the real thing. <laughs> that's that's the real thing. Uh, can be used. Everything. That's the the whole material world can be used for glorifying Krishna and glorifying Krishna's devotees, but we misuse them for uh, either uh, criticism or just useless uh, Gramya Kata, useless talk. Mm. Uh, that's our, our misfortune. Thank you. So thank you for, for uh, reminding us of that. It's such a wonderful, uh, wonderful vow yeah. not to criticize others, especially on the internet. Yeah. There's some, in the chat, There's some uh, questions and comments in the chat, uh, but you can get to that whenever you like. Okay, let's see. Uh, should have an option to automatically scroll up. Considering how much cursing and counter cursing is going on, it's a good thing it doesn't have much effect. Yes, Panchatatva says. <laughs> yeah. But it does. It doesn't. It's not that it doesn't have an effect. It it, it doesn't, uh, you know, that you that your curse to go to hell doesn't send you to hell. That your curse to break your leg doesn't uh, break your leg, but it does pollute the whole atmosphere. Uh, that's uh, that's the problem. That even though these curses are ineffective in in uh, bringing about the the uh, declared. Uh, misfortune. They they pollute the atmosphere and they pollute the mind of the person who who utters the curse, as well as the person, as well as everyone else, really, um, who gets involved. Um, Jan says, "If you break your leg, don't come running to me." Okay. We won't sue. Um, yeah, no, not much effect. And then Panchatatsu says, yeah, except on the consciousness of the cursed, the cursor. 
Um, Kamala says, I've overheard from some of the devotees saying, Prabhu, you're lucky that I'm not a Brahmin or else I'd curse you. This isn't right for at least an ISKCON devotee. What's your view on this? Well, um, that sounds like it could be a joke. Um, you, it sounds like it could be a joke. You, you, you'd say to, uh, to, to someone, you know, you're lucky I'm not a Brahmin or I'd curse you, which is just a sort of mild reproof a way of saying uh, you really shouldn't have done that or uh, um, it sounds like a, a, a less what's the word yeah it, it doesn't sound too serious to me uh, you're lucky I'm not a Brahmin or I'd curse you um, humble too I'm not a Brahmin so there's uh, <laughs> I think if all the curses were sort of uh, notched down to that level we'd be pretty, we'd be doing pretty well. And we have uh, Tosi Priya and Nilmani Prabhu. I think they have uh, a question or comments. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Hi, Krishna. I remember um, reading a pastime of Srila Prabhupada where he was driving with the devotees through um, Detroit and he pointed at a building and said, what is that? And the devotees said, that's the Detroit Rena Renaissance Center. And he said, they will never have a Renaissance and when I think of all the cities that have fallen on hard times, such as New York City and other places, but have later had resurgence, I, I, me I remember feeling at the time when I read that, that either Prabhupada was cursing Detroit or, or, or it was, uh, it was a, you know, great insight into that it would never, but very, it's one of the few cities that hasn't had this sort of renaissance or, or a resurgence after falling on hard times, you know, in the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What can I say? The, the further thought comes, there was a further thought, let me just see if I can. That sometimes even though a devotee doesn't um, take offense or doesn't avenge a, a curse or an insult, um, the Lord does. So that the offense does have um, an effect, but the effect is on the person who released the, the curse or the insult. Um, that may happen. Uh, the insult is, is um, ineffective as far as harming the, the, the devotee, uh, but the person who wishes to insult or, or defame the devotee is uh, punished by the Lord. That may also happen. We don't wish it on, on people, but it may happen. Therefore, again, one should be very careful. Um, even if we're not initiated by Vaisheshika Prabhu, we can take heed. Okay, anything else here? Yeah, Maharaj. Um, so in this purport, Prabhupada mentions that transcendentalists are not affected by the three modes of material nature. Um, and I was trying to understand the distinction between the fact that even transcendentalists, great sages, and so forth, that are in the material world, are still subject to birth, old age, disease, and, and death from that perspective, right? Mm -hmm. and although these may not be directly linked, they're, they're also somehow subject to the threefold miseries and sufferings and so forth. Mm -hmm. So how do we connect those two ideas to the idea that, hey, well, that's really not the three modes of material nature and Maya that's affecting the transcendentalists. Well, there's several perspectives on, on that. Um, let's start off with um, this point, that the so-called effects of the three modes of nature on the transcendentalists are, are external. They're, exter they're affecting the body they're affecting the, the external dress, but not the, not the person. So the person who doesn't identify with the body isn't affected, he's transcendental. The Prabhupada was always asked that stupid question, um, why do you shave your head? Uh, reporters always had nothing, or very often had nothing more profound to, to ask. Um, and Prabhupada one time answered, it's so that when they hit you on the hair, 
you won't feel it. Right, you've shaved off your hair, now it's lying on the floor, so when they hit you on the hair, you won't feel it because you've shaved it off. So the, the devotee is essentially disconnected from this body. The examples given of the, the coconut, uh, mm. the dried up coconut, when the coconut dries up, then the coconut meat is still inside the shell, but it's detached. Mm. So you, you shake it and it, it rattles because the, the meat is, is disconnected. So the devotee, even in this material world, is um, detached from the external um, effects of material nature. Iha yasya harir dasye, karmana manasa gira, Nicholas vapyavas tasu, jivan mukta sujit. He's liberated even, even in this life. Uh, so he's not affected by, by these things. In the um, in, the, in the Sanskrit, Atma Agunashraya. Um, he, he doesn't literally, he, he doesn't take shelter of the gunas. Uh, what is that in Bhagavad Gita? Prakriti Mohinim Shita. Mogasha Moga Karmano. Mogasha Moga Karmano, Moga Ganavi Asarim. Uh, Rakshasim Asarim Chayava, Prakritim Mohinim Shritaha. The mm, demons take shelter of the material energy. There's, uh, in, where, what is it in, in King Lear, the, Edmund the Bastard? He's, uh, he, he cries out, uh, Nature, thou art my goddess. You know, so they, they, they worship material nature. Uh, the, the shaktas literally worship material nature. The, the scientists try to uh, get material nature on their side, essentially. Uh, they absorb themselves, immerse themselves in the workings of nature and try to uh, win over nature, uh, subdue nature, make nature their servant. Uh, so they're deeply involved with the material energy. But Mahatmanas tu man parta daivim prakritim ashrita. The devotees take shelter of the divine nature. And saguna uh, samiti jaitan brahmabhu yaya kalpate. They transcend the dualities of uh, created by the three modes of, of nature. So even while these things are going on, uh, they don't identify with these things. And therefore, they're not affected with these by these things. Another point Prabhupada makes that the king took advantage of the awkward situation. Uh, the so-called dualities of the material nature are um, opportunities for devotees. That was Sachinandan Marja's class the other day, that every calamity is, offers an opportunity. The uh, when Dhruva Maharaj was going back to Godhead, uh, death uh, suddenly showed up on, on the scene to, uh, you know, death wants to get everyone. So uh, death showed up on the scene. So, uh, but the flower airplane was there or the Vaikuntha airplane was there. So um, Dhruva Maharaj took advantage of, he stepped on death's head and got into the airplane. So he took advantage of the awkward situation. Or here, King Parikshit uh, took advantage of, of the awkward situation and turned it into uh, an opportunity to achieve the highest perfection. The Prabhupada gives the example of the, the capitalist in the share market. When the, the stocks go up or the stocks go down, he's unaffected because he it's, it's fine for him either way. If things go up, he sells and makes a profit. If things go down, he buys cheap. I'm not really privy to what's going on right now, but I assume that there are smart operators for whom the uh, present economic calamity is a real opportunity. They're taking advantage of the situation in their own way to uh, profit. And I'm, I'm not gonna you know, flesh out a conspiracy theory here, but that's how a smart capitalist uh, works. Uh, if, if things are a mess, well, they, you know, okay, then the, the market is depressed, 
uh, we'll we'll find a way to take advantage of that. Oil is, a, is at a, a low price, somebody will buy it. And when the price comes up again, they'll uh, take advantage. So the devotee takes advantage of the so-called uh, dualities. He's not attached, but everything's an advantage for advancing his Krishna consciousness. Is that okay? Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, thank you, Nilamani Prabhu. Anything else? Okay. We have a question Hare from Athena. Athena, go ahead, Athena. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandu Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, I apologize if this was um, asked previously and I missed it uh, in a previous lecture, but um, my question was actually around devotee aparad and I think it's been drilled in our heads so much that it's so bad uh, to commit offenses. And um, I think sometimes then devotees perhaps uh, don't feel comfortable speaking their truth. And so I guess I'd, I'm not sure if you have any advice around that and how, I don't know if there's an internal uh, barometer or system to know if we're providing feedback or if we're criticizing. And um, I guess the third part of the question is if we- well, let's, let's, do, let's start there because this being Kali Yuga, the chance that I'll remember all all of the questions is, is small. So let's start with what you already asked. The devotee, the devotee may feel uncomfortable speaking their truth. Um, that's probably good. The one should be, if the truth is going to be uh, unpalatable, especially if the truth is going to defame others, then we should feel some discomfort. Um, now we may decide mm -hmm. that the discomfort um, the need outweighs the discomfort. Uh, we may decide that, um, but the discomfort is, is healthy. Before I, um, before I speak such a thing in, in, in public assembly or before I, I uh, you know, let loose on a friend, even in, 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 in private, then uh, I should feel some, um, amber light warning you flashing and, and warning me that you know this is sensitive territory so therefore for example in in, in uh, amongst cultured persons when we know something's going to be uh sticky when we know it's going to be sensitive then we think twice and well how should i say this well should i say it um if i say it you know is it is it just like not worth it should i just keep mum or how do I say it in such a way that uh, it will be beneficial for, for the person who, who hears? Uh, what should I do? Should I speak to someone else instead, you know, to his peer, or mm. if he's my superior? Um, that's good that I should think, you know, think twice. Um, I, may, I may take action anyway, but I think twice. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Well, and then the second part of the question was, how do you, if you feel like you, um, even in, we're always constantly working with other devotees in Seva or pushing project through, and um, I guess, is there an internal uh, system or problem to know whether you're giving feedback or if you're criticizing? I think it's like maybe a fine line. So is, do you have any advice around that just to make sure, uh, just, Again, whether we're giving feedback versus criticizing. Well, the first thing is to have a, to cultivate a, an appreciative mentality. You know, if we're always in the mentality of fault finding, always in the mentality of, of uh, criticizing or, or um, you know, bringing ourselves up by bringing others down, then, you know, then it's, it's our sort of default mode is becomes to, to uh, criticize others in an unhealthy way. Um, but so we wanna cultivate a, a, a mood of, of appreciation and, um, and of remembering that the devotees are, they're uh, dear to Krishna. They're uh, Krishna's people. Uh, so uh, before I insult one of Krishna's people and risk insulting Krishna, uh, in the process, 
I should be, I should be careful or, uh, or why should I criticize? Let me um, appreciate the, the good thing. Prabhupada said that um, flies go to pus, whereas um, bees go for nectar. So if we cultivate that uh, general mentality, then when there's a feedback uh, occasion, mm. then, you know, it'll be our nature not to yeah, 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 to uh, insult or, or to, uh, to try to make capital for ourselves at someone else's expense. It'll be our nature to think about the, the welfare of that other person. A devotee is naturally a well-wisher. Um, is that okay? Is that... Yes, thank you. Uh, and just the last part of the question is, uh, in one of your past lectures, you did say um, it is a lot about delivery, um, being sensitive of how we perhaps deliver our thoughts and our feedback um, for, say, a goodness of the project or um, how things could really improve. But in the event that the devotee takes it as an offense, and we understand that devotees are not to take offense, um, but uh, perhaps they do. Mm. Uh, I guess, what is your advice, your intentions were not to offend the devotee, but that devotee did. Um, how do you handle something like that? Or what is your general thoughts around something like that? My first thought is that you know, senior devotees uh, who might watch this video might be amused to hear me talking about how to uh, not offend others and and how to uh, speak in such a way that uh, it's constructive and not crude. Uh, it's probably not my strong suit. But um, having said that, repeat your question again, so I can focus on it. Sure. So if we have um, good intentions to try to but the devotee convey feedback, offense, yes, but the devotee it. takes offense, right? Well, then we, we first thing is we may, may recalibrate, you know, that I thought I was just being constructive, but he's taken it, um, you know, as we say, taken it personally or taken it um, uh, as a, a serious criticism. So we make it recalibrate. Um, you know, I, I'm sorry. I didn't. You know, didn't mean to offend you. I didn't. Uh, didn't realize this was a you know a sensitive spot for you. Yeah, you know, immediately. Uh, and we find that that um, we'll we'll find in the next chapter that it's the nature of a devotee. Um, if he commits some offense, if he does something wrong, that he he uh, he catches it or he he regrets it. He regrets it, so the that goes a long way. Otherwise, you know, you know why get offended? I mean, I'm just giving you honest feedback for crying out loud. You know, that's not going to really help a whole lot. Um, listen, I, I'm right, okay? Just just get it that that I, I don't know about you, but I get things right. Um, that's not going to carry us very far. Amani no manadena to offer respect to others. So then uh, I made a mistake. I thought that I was just giving honest feedback, but obviously I've offended this person or, or the person has taken it uh, as, a, uh, as a cut. So then I can recalibrate and, and see if I can um, you know, either apologize or, or uh, you know, change course. Um, that, that would be a thought. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything else here? There's yes. Al contraire, Anjitatra says, one can only point to the careful. Oh, he's just saying some good things about me. We're going to skip that. To skip that. Okay. Um, anything else? Okay. We come to the last chapter of this canto, the appearance of Shukadev Goswami. Sutuvacha, Mahipatis Tvata Tvatkarma Garhyam, 
Uchintiyan Atma Kutam Sudurmanaha Aho Maya Nicham Anarya Vatkutam Niragasi Brahmani Guntatejasi. Sri Sutta Goswami said, while returning home, the king, Maharaj Pariksit, felt that the act he had committed against the faultless and powerful Brahmin was heinous and uncivilized. Consequently, he was distressed. Purport. The pious king regretted his accidental improper treatment of the powerful Brahmin who was faultless. Such repentance is natural for a good man like the king. And such repentance delivers a devotee from all kinds of sins accidentally committed. The devotees are naturally faultless. Accidental sins committed by a devotee are sincerely regretted. And by the grace of the Lord, all sins unwillingly committed by a devotee are burnt in the fire of repentance. Very significant uh, verse here. Uh, the Vichintian, the king is, is thinking uh, very seriously that uh, tat karma karyam, uh, I did something abominable, uh, atmakritam, uh, I, I've done, I was the one who did something uh, very bad. Sudur uh, manaha, and therefore he was uh, unhappy. Dur uh, manaha, his mind depressed, even Prabhupada says. Aho maya nicham anarja, anarja vatkritam. I acted like an uncivilized person. Uh, anarja drishtam asvarga, anarja. Uh, not like a, a civilized person, but just the opposite. Nicham, uh, like a low, uh, I did a very low thing, a heinous thing. Uh, Niragasi, to Brahmani, uh, to a, a faultless Brahmin, uh, a grave, powerful Brahmin. Uh, I did such a thing. So he turned the criticism uh, on, on himself. This is the, the mood of, of a devotee. He, he, he's aware of his own shortcomings, of his own faults. The, the gross materialist is, is expert in finding the faults of others, but a Devotee sees his own faults, or he blames himself uh, for the uh, for his own Im improper actions, and he regrets it sincerely. Uh, the on the material, you know, in mat material dealings these days, especially, it's. Um, there's apologies without regrets. You know, so we say something like, um, if, if you felt offended by anything I did, then I'm sorry. Uh, then I, I'm, I'm sorry about that. So when you unpack that, it, it says that it's really your issue. You know, if you feel uh, that there was something wrong with what I did. I'm sorry about that. Actually, I don't do anything wrong. But if you feel that I did anything wrong, then uh, my apologies. Hmm? Uh, that means insincere or, or shallow. He doesn't come out and say, I did something wrong and I'm sorry. I know that I hurt you. I know that I uh, acted wrongly. Uh, no, uh, I, I didn't do anything wrong. Uh, I was justified. Uh, we can trace it. Point one, point two, point three, point four. Check, 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 check. I did everything right. 
Uh, so really it's your issue if you feel uh, that there was anything wrong that I did. But if you have that feeling, then I'm sorry. Uh, or you know, indirectly, I'm sorry for you, you know, that you, you, you don't get it. Uh, that kind of shallow apology, or, or we, we, you know, we do apologize and we, you know, we, we um, say something designed to be um, appropriate for the occasion. We, we, we utter some uh, apologetic expression. Uh, but within ourselves, we don't think that there was anything uh, wrong. Uh, we think that, yes, whatever I did is uh, right. Siddho hum balavan suki. I'm basically perfect. Uh, or I'm, I'm right so often that, that uh, the wrongs are hard to find. Uh, so this is the materialistic mentality, but a devotee uh, thinks uh, it is, is uh, Arya, he, he's a, a civilized person. And he thinks I did something wrong. I've, I've uh, offended this person. The I've uh, done the wrong thing, and so then he regrets it. He sincerely feels I did uh, I did something wrong. I committed an offense, and that regret is purifying. That regret is purifying. All the sins are burnt up in the fire of sincere uh, repentance. Uh, so when there's there, then you can move forward. Uh, then you can move forward. If it's really, uh, everybody's protecting their own false ego. Everyone is protecting their own sense that uh, whatever they do is right. Then even though there's formally some negotiated um, patching up, the, the air is not really cleared. Uh, the, the polluted consciousness is still um, holding sway. Uh, the so-called apologies are usually perceived as in, often perceived as insincere because they are. And one's own heart is not purified. He just can't get it. Even no one can even bring him to see that that he was at fault. Um, his you know, inner eyes are, are shut. But a an advanced devotee like Prikshit Maharaj, if he does something wrong, feels it and regrets it, and therefore fixes it. Also, um, if he's not able to actually remedy the situation. At least he, he, his own, in his own heart, he he becomes purified. Therefore, it said, "Kshipram uh, bhavati dharmatma, shashvat chantim nikachati, pi chait sudaracharo, bhajate mam ananyapak, sadhureva samanta, samyak vyavasita vyavasita isa." In the ninth chapter, uh, Krishna says, even if the devotee does something, uh, not only durachar, not only uh, misbehaved, sudurachar, exceedingly uh, bad. Uh, even if he does something exceedingly bad, padate mam and if he rema remains engaged in devotional service, then uh, still he has to be considered a sadhu, a saintly person. Kshipram Bhavati Dharmatma, he quickly, Kshipram quickly comes back to the right standard. Why? Because he, he recognizes, I just, you, how do you come back to the right standard if you think that you didn't do anything wrong? But a, a devotee is always awake to his own imperfections, always awake to his own shortcomings. Uh, this is different from the uh, so-called, um, what is that? Um, oh, in psychology, among the psychologists, 
uh, oh, lack of self-esteem. The devotee has a healthy lack of self-esteem. He doesn't think always, I'm the greatest, whatever I do is, is right. He's always aware of his own uh, shortcomings, not to the point where he becomes paralyzed, he can't perform his duties, but he uh, has a healthy awareness of his own uh, faults. And that helps him to regret the things that he does that are wrong, and that purifies the heart. Shipram Bhavati Dharma. Therefore, Kontiyad Pratijani Hid Name Bhakta Pranashti. Therefore, a devotee is never lost. The materialist is always lost because he's, he's so full of himself that he can't see his own uh, mistakes, his own shortcomings, his own faults. But a devotee is always uh, sensitive to these things that I, did I do something wrong? We, we find the king is returning home and he's thinking, well, wait a second, was that king, was that sage feigning trance or maybe he was actually in trance? He, he, he doesn't, uh, he's not so confident that whatever I do is right. And when he sees that he's made a mistake, he sincerely regrets it and that purifies. Anything else here? Very important. Uh, Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Mm. Uh, based on what you were just saying, I was thinking how because Parikshit Maharaj took full responsibility for his own actions and felt very keenly that he had done something wrong, and how you're saying this is the proper mentality of a devotee that he sees himself as being at fault, I was thinking he attained perfection by hearing right? Mm. And he was able to hear with rapt attention mm. because he felt like he really needed to hear it. Mm. Whereas someone who thinks, you know, I'm okay, what, what, what would be the impetus for them to sit down and hear in an assembly of sages if everything's just fine with me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I really, I've been wrongly cursed. I'm sitting here because some stupid Brahmin kid thought he was hot stuff and didn't recognize that I'm the representative of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You know, with that kind of abhiman, with that kind of pride, it would be very uh, difficult to, to, you know, you wouldn't meet Sukadeva Goswami under those circumstances. Yeah. Thank Good you. Point. Thank you. We have a question from Nitika. Nitika, go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances. Oh, glory to Srila Prabhupada. Maharaj, uh, is it appropriate to correct senior devotees who are senior to us both by age as well as spiritual life? And even if we see the senior devotees committing a mistake, although the mistake may not be directly impacting me, but is it appropriate on my behalf to correct them? Generally not. The, in cultured society, uh, there's a, a keen awareness of where I am and where I stand in relation to others in a hierarchical uh, relationship. Um, so for example, children are not expected to criticize their parents. Now it's like, uh, Barbara, you know, get off it. Who do you think you are? You know, that's a kid talking to his mom. Um, and that's a sign of, you know, totally uncultured um, family, I would, I would think. Or else, you know, a kid born from some strange uh, karma. But in a cultured family, you, you, can't, you can't speak back to your parents. You, you have to, even a Christian in the Bible, honor thy mother and thy father. You have to be uh, you, you can't do that. Uh, it's just not uh, done. Uh, similarly, to, to speak ill of, of superiors uh, is, is not done. The, uh, in the army, you know, you can't, you, you can't uh, tell your commanding officer what you think of him and what you think of his policies. Uh, you know, just what, what a jerk you think he is. Um, you can't, because there's that sense of of hierarchy. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, 
I, I was in an office and uh, in in India, government office, and the, the fellow I was speaking with got a call from his superior, and the the the, uh, the talk from from the side of, of the subordinate was, uh, G, Haji, G, 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 yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. You know, it wasn't, really? I mean, come on. Very uh, in, in cultured life. The, what is that, pujarha varisudana? It should be pratyotyami pujarha varisudana. Oh, oh, Krishna, uh, I shouldn't be opposing Bhishma and um, Drona in, in, in battle with, with arrows, I should be worship, worshiping them. They're worthy of my worship. Uh, so there's that sense that these are my superiors, even though, what is that um, in the first chapter? Uh, even though they're greedy, what, is, what was the expression? Um, Uh, I probably won't find it fast enough. The Guru Nahatahi Mahanu Bhava Shreya Bhaktam Bhaik Shampi Harote Hartwartha Kamas Guru Dharthrashtra, that the uh, older sons of Dhritarashtra, even though they are so greedy, we even should. Even though they're so greedy. Yeah. So uh, still, uh, these are my superiors. Uh, my, I, I'd rather go begging than, than to have to fight against. Uh, my superiors. There's that uh, Yudhisthira Maharaj. He uh, agreed to come back and, and uh, gamble again because it was the order of his superior, uh, the Tridharashtra. Uh, so that sense of not speaking out uh, or speaking back to superiors in a, a cultured uh, family is, is, is very strong. Uh, and that's the sign of a, a cultured person. Prabhupada said the sign of a devotee is that he's a perfect gentleman. So this is, this is part of gentlemanly behavior to be very respectful towards superiors. I think even Krishna, he's respecting King, uh, King Ugrasen uh, because although Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Ugrasen is the king. So he's in a superior position and Krishna is speaking to him. Uh, as one speaks to a superior. Now, under those circumstances, if something is um, therefore, uh, if we're going to say something to a superior, either we don't say it, or we say it in such a tactful way that it's appropriate for our uh, position. Um, I wonder whether uh, we might, you know, very, uh, consider this or that, or um, if, if I could express a thought, I wonder whether, rather than, oh, you know, you just blew it. Uh, we you know, either say the thing very a little carefully uh, with consciousness of our inferior subordinate position, or we may, if it's a serious matter, we may go to the person's peer um, and say, you know, this is the situation and I can't say anything because I'm the subordinate, but you could say something. Uh, so that's, uh, these are some of the thoughts. Now, if something's really egregiously wrong, um, we may have to overstep even the consideration of, of superiority. Uh, you know, we find out that our superiors molested a child. We don't say he's my superior. You know, we call the police. Um, that's, you, uh, you know, everything has its limits, um, including respect for superiors. Uh, but um, in under, you know, reasonable circumstances, uh, we're respectful to superiors. And that, that's good for us in the long run even though it means I may have to swallow something, even though my sense of, of uh, what's right may be sometimes offended uh, by uh, acting appropriately, my heart becomes purified.
and in cultured societies, there are all sorts of ways of, uh, of, of getting things across um, to our superiors in a respectful way or in a indirect way or um, appropriately. Um, to, is that all right? Thank you, Manoj. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Tulsi Priya, isn't there a pastime in CC where the devotee asks the superior permission to speak without fear? Yeah, I, I'm sure there, there, such things are there. I, I don't remember which pastime it was either, but that would be entirely um, appropriate. The, uh, yeah. Vasudev, right. yes. I'm sorry, I found it. It's um, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. I can share it with you if you like. Um, the next day, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya requested Lord Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to give him permission to speak with, to make a statement without fear. The mm -hmm. Lord gave Bhattacharya assurance that he could speak without fear, but added that if his statement were suitable, he would accept it, but if, and if it were not, he would reject it. Mm -hmm. And then it's uh, talking about uh, King Prataparudra. Um, right, giving him some mercy. Right, so this is the Beta Kirtana pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, chapter 11, Madhyalila. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I, I always thought that was interesting that he could say what he wanted, but he asked permission first. Yeah, this this is cultured society. The uh, just as another example, not exact exactly in the same line of asking permission, but when the uh, Kaji came into the assembly where Sanatan Goswami, uh, after pleading sick, was studying Srimad Bhagavatam with the Brahmins. All the Brahmins stood up because the Kaji was the was the ruler. So even though he was a Mlecha, even though they were Brahmins, they stood up because he was the king. So uh, a, a proper sense of of honoring superiors. There's. Um, Let's see. Draupadi's extreme acceptance of Ashwatthama despite his horribly sinful acts. Yeah, that was sort of uh, taken as sentimental that she still accepted it as, him as a Brahmin, but yes. Um, th there's a, an incident that comes to mind. We are just about out of time. There's um, a book I read some time ago about Saudi Arabia. Um, the king at the time, these were all, they were all the rulers by this time were sons of the um, original founder of the country, Ibn Saud. Um, but the, the, uh, the king was, the, the eldest brother was the king and the other brothers, one's the finance minister, one's the defense minister, one's the, you know, the whole royal family, everybody's got a slot, but the el eldest brother was the king. But the smartest brother was one of the ministers, I forget which one. And whenever the foreign diplomats would come, they'd, they'd head straight for his house and they'd, they'd get the lowdown of what was going on and they'd talk about uh, you know, what sort of deals might be negotiated and what sort of policies might be worked out. You know, they'd all, uh, he was the guy because he was the smartest of the batch. But where, when they were in the court, that brother wouldn't say anything. And this, with the same diplomats, the same group of people, when he was in the court, in the presence of his elder brother, the king, unless he was asked, he didn't say anything. So this is Islamic society, you know, this is not Vedic society. But still that sense is there that, you know, he's, he's superior, he's my elder brother. The Pandavas also respected Yudhisthira as their uh, superior because he was the eldest brother and the king. One last question. Um, we'll see if we have time for it. Uh, well, there's two last questions, but let's just see.
Um, scroll, scroll. Yeah, Panchatattva points out that uh, in Krishna book, uh, Krishna's instructions in Bhagavad Gita are honored and heard for all time because of the blessing he received from his superior, his spiritual master, Sandipani Muni. Krishna is God, and still this is taken as the reason for the honor given to his message on this planet and others, in this universe and others. Yes. Bruyus Nigdasya Shishasya, Guru Ve Guru Makita. Your uh, Sutta Goshami, your gurus have uh, reserved, have blessed you with all the uh, benedictions reserved for a gentle and submissive disciple. You know, to criticize the spiritual master, we find that, uh, who was that? That disciple of, um, he, of Madhavendra Puri who had the the uh, gall to, to criticize him or correct him uh, and lost and basically lost everything. Um, so one, but the, the humble and submissive disciple gets the blessings of the spiritual master or the superiors. What if we know that the tendency, this is Balaji, uh, to make the mistake has not left us and when we ask forgiveness, how do we look at ourselves? We look at ourselves as um, unfortunate, that this tendency is still there in, in my heart, um, what to do, what to do. All right, um, our time has come. Madan Gopal has reappeared. And let's hear about coming attractions. Thank you very much, Maharaj, for a wonderful uh, starting of this next chapter. This is the final chapter of the first canto and uh, look forward to how it unfolds. Um, so upcoming events for this week. Tomorrow evening, His Holiness Bhakti Purushottama Swami from India will be uh, uh, talking on Jagannath Leela. Uh, Jaydwaj Swami, of course, is with us on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays on the same channel. And then on Thursday, we have Hari Parsha the Prabhu who will be talking on Dhamma Darlila. Mm -hmm. And uh, stay tuned for the weekend. We have uh, another power packed weekend as well. So at 11 a.m. on Saturday, Her Grace Vishakha Devi Dasi on Srila Prabhupada. And at 8 p.m., His Holiness Giriraja Swami on the Lord's Guaranteed Protection. And on Sunday evening, 6 p.m., His Holiness Radhanath Swami on Lord Chaitanya's Loving Dealings. So please uh, join us. It will be very much appreciated. And we look forward to seeing you all tomorrow and every night going forward. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Mother. Thank, you Thank you very much to all. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Thank you Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. I'll bless your service. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Gopal Prabhu. Hey, well.